And Emperor Kanmu, we will talk about next time as he brings us into the Heian period. Heian period. Heian period. period. Today we move on to medieval Japan, starting with the Kamakura period. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm dumb and I totally forgot the Han period, so we're gonna do that one today! So the Han period extended from 794 to 1185 and it is known for when the capital was moved from Nara back to Kyoto or Heian-kyo as it was known in this period. This is the period when Buddhism, Taoism, and many other Chinese influences were at their height and in my opinion, their best sense of fashion. In my recent Japanese history videos, there has been a lot of bloodshed and battles and an abundance of curses, but the Heian period, you know, it was pretty chill. It's even in the name. Heian itself means peaceful. So Heian-kyo was actually not the original intended destination for the new capital led by Emperor Kanmu. No, he wanted to go to Nagaoka-kyo because of better water transportation routes, but when you're closer to water and stuff, sometimes flooding happens and flooding brings disease, so they had to abort that mission and we got Heian-kyo instead. Kanmu did, however, attempt to improve the tank-style administrative system known as the Rizio, but he didn't want to make any big drastic reform so as to de-intensify everything that happened in the Nara period. Kanmu was actually known as one of Japan's most forceful emperors and he had abandoned the universal conscription by 792. And he still waged military offenses towards the descendants of the Jomon people, the Emishi, who would be defeated by 801, partly in due to their new commander, Sakunoue no Tamaramaro. So that success for Kanmu would lead to a lot more victories for Kyoto and would extend their whole imperial domain, including in the east. And with that increase in domain would come more stability ability for Japan, finally, and this is largely in part to the Fujiwara clan hooking up with the imperial family. So that's gonna be fun. Kanmu would pass away in 806, leaving behind a small Thor versus Loki succession battle between his two sons. His eldest son, Thor, I mean Heisei, would rule the throne for three years before Loki, I mean Saga, would take the throne because Heisei fell ill and was forced to abdicate. But then later Saga got sick too, so that didn't go as planned at all. During this time, the Fujiwara clan was so determined to get in with that imperial line that they were throwing in their daughters left and right to all of the royals, and this would make a lot of the emperors really angry. However, the Fujiwara clan always had imperial influences because of these unions. Until we get to Emperor Daigo, who was like, you can't do anything. I don't have any of your Fujiwara blood, nor is my wife. And you would think that'd be the end of the Fujiwara clan, but oh no, actually they got stronger. For some reason, not having a blood tie increased their non-familial bond? Who am I kidding? Their bond was not over friendship. It was because the Fujiwara had so much land called Shoin and a lot of money that their influence didn't just touch politics, it was influencing culture. And especially their power would grow even more because central control was decreasing. So the Fujiwaras really brought their A game. The Fujiwara clan heavily encouraged involvement in the arts and religious practices, most notably The Tale of Genji, written by Murasaki Shikibu, a member of the Fujiwara clan. The Fujiwara clan would peak under Fujiwara Michinaga, who would dominate the court from 995 to 1027. Basically, his superpower was the ability to enthrone and dethrone emperors at the snap of a finger his little finger. Though the struggle of power as the center of authority shifted from Emperor Shirakawa's retirement would begin in 1086, it doesn't fully play out until that whole Kamakura Shogunate thing that we talked about in that video I wasn't supposed to make before making this video happen. So yeah. But yeah, it's really the Fujiwara clan's fault for the Kamakura Shogunate's rise to power because with more lands, you need more people to guard the lands creating the whole warrior class thing, which was the problem that we see in the next time period of the video from last time. This is getting confusing. The rise of the warrior class's dispute with the court was very gradual, beginning in 939 with Taira no Masakado, who would lead an uprising in the eastern province of Hitachi. Almost at the same time, Fujiwara no Sumitomo would lead an uprising in the west, but as I said before, the big time successes of the warrior class would not happen for a few centuries. The most important part about the warrior class's arising would be the concept of Bushido, which still plays an important role in today's society. These ideals of the Bushi would encompass everything about about loyalty, integrity, honor, and general badassery. Other important cultural developments would be the creation of katakana and hiragana. These two writing systems would facilitate the written word in Japan from poems to stories to diaries and yamatoe, which is a Japanese painting style that depicts Japanese native scenes in contrast to karae, which is the Chinese version of essentially the same thing that Japan got the idea from because Japan pretty much got most of its early ideas from China 
because China. Now, because of all this cultural refinement and growth in their wealth, both literally and figuratively speaking, decentralization would begin to emerge. Aristocrats and religious institutions would gain more lands, followed by a growth in house governments, which we saw in the old clan system. The Taiho Code lapsed and became purely ceremonial, so now family institutions were becoming public institutions. Basically what we've seen this entire time with the Fujiwara clan was happening to a lot more clans. They cut off relations with China, even though Buddhist pilgrims would still travel between them frequently, overall, officially, they were, quote, never, ever, ever getting back together. So here's the new problem. Food production would decline and population would grow. You can see there's a problem there. So competition for resources would be the undoing of many of imperial line families, including the Fujiwara, Taira, and Minamoto, who would be constantly attacking each other for these resources and screwing up the whole reason why this is called the Heian period, guys. Come on now. But again, most of the bloodshed between these families doesn't happen until the next video. I mean, period, the previous video, next period. Again, this is really confusing. As for religion, the sects of Tendai and Shingon would emphasize a simple faith through the doctrines of the true Pure Land sect that would grow in popularity. During the social upheaval of the later Heian period, these doctrines would offer comfort to the general populace. What? Social upheaval in my nice peaceful Heian period? Yes, indeed. So now we have gotten to Emperor Gosanjo, who is the first emperor not born to a Fujiwara mother. He was determined to restore imperial rule in an attempt to kick out the Fujiwara clan because everybody's just had it with the Fujiwaras, okay? So his master plan was to take all of the shonen owned by all these families and put them on a proper record instead of, you know, illegally owning lands like the Fujiwara clan sort of kind of did. So the Fujiwara were not so happy about this because they're like, hey, we don't need a license or anything, we have the right to bear show in. But Emperor Gosanjo did not give a flying frackle bucket. So then he creates the Inno Cho, or Office of the Cloistered Emperor, which contains all of these emperors who had abdicated the throne but still wanted to work behind the scenes kind of stuff. So that further kicked out the Fujiwara from any political influence without actually banishing them. They would, however, retain their old positions within the court because, I mean, they're kind of a huge clan, you, you can't get rid of all of them. So the Fujiwara clan was basically reduced to ministers and civil dictators that were totally bypassed all of the time. And that would lead to the rise of the Minamoto clan. Meanwhile, the Fujiwara clan was gonna have their own little civil war between themselves, thus splitting into a northern and southern faction. The Fujiwara's final attempt to gain back their power in this period would be during the Hogan Rebellion, which we talked a little bit about in the Kamakura period, where they sided with the abdicated emperor and they were all destroyed, basically. Spoiler alert, sorry. This left the Taira and Minamoto clans to fight over who gets to sit on the throne. The Taira would be the victors and would maintain a tenuous control over the throne until 1185 when we move into the Kamakura period, which we all know how that went, so we're not gonna talk about it, okay? And that's it for the Heian period. Sorry, I messed up the timeline completely, but you know, that's what happened when you're a time traveler. Next time, we will talk about the Muromachi period, and if you guys have any further questions or comments, you can leave them down below or on Facebook, Tumblr, and Twitter. Go buy my book. Please, okay, bye! And in my personal appearance, appearance, great start to this video. Nara period. Nara period. Hang style administrative stuff there, wrist system known as Arizio. Improve, we are recording, right? Oh my God, I had that moment again. It happens every time you're filming a video. You think you're not recording when you are recording and then you regret that you are recording because now you're talking to yourself to a camera about the fear of not recording because that's a legit fear that I have now. Sakunoue no Tamaromaro. Sakunoue no Tamaromaro. Sakunoue no Tamaromaro. 790 stew. Sakunoue. Sakunoue. Sakunoue no Tamaromaro. Sakunoue. Sakunoue. Sakunoue no Tamaromaro. His eldest son. Son. I had butterbeer. God, there's still so much to say. Why are there so many words? As I'm like, I'm acting drunk now. What is this? This is non alcoholic. It says right on there non. You can't see it from there, but it says non-alcoholic. <laughs>